Upstairs, I ran into Soldier's bedroom. I took the key off of her jewelry box, which was right on top of her cluttered dresser. I opened the file cabinet and flipped feverishly through the files. I had to check each one for the first name Bilal. I didn't know his last name. Finally, I got to Bilal O'Day. I grabbed the folder. I snatched the New York Times off of Soldier's bed and placed the folder and all of its contents in between the pages to conceal it. In Lauren's room, I grabbed my empty Nike luggage bag and placed inside it everything that absolutely could not be left here. I surveyed Lauren's dresser for my belongings, saw my beeper, and threw it in the Nike bag. Out of nervousness, I checked my red coach bag again. No problem. My money was still there. I grabbed the roll of 20s, peeled off two of them, and slid them into my red leather jacket pocket for easy access. I opened the small drawer on the burrow and collected my diamond necklace, my bracelet, and my earrings. I put them into my red bag. My lipstick, hair comb, brush, and of course my box cutter were the last to go in. I double checked everything. With my hands full, I stepped lightly down the five flights of stairs. I was so excited to be leaving this place forever. Panic racked my body when I hit the landing approaching the last flight of stairs. I was staring down at Lauren, who was standing at the front door, paying what appeared to be a delivery man. There must have been 20 medium-sized boxes covering the foyer floor.